Okay, the gondola ride has to be my favorite activity in Venice so far. This is absolutely wonderful. Like, I love doing this ride. So, my plan failed again. I'm gonna come back for the third time and try to see if I can get in to the St. Mark's Basilica. Welcome to Favorware. My name is John. In this episode, I will take you to see some of the wonderful things in Venice. I spent three nights here in Venice and let me show you what I had experienced. Okay, so let's go. I noticed that Venice has so many narrow passageways. I thought Milan's alley is narrow, but the one in Venice it's like on a whole other level. Like literally, this alley, maximum two people. It's no wonder that there are no cars allowed in the Venice water city because the alley here, they're so narrow. Like you can't even fit a motorbike here. So everybody just walk or use the water taxi to get around. Look at this, this is Venice for ya. Like to get to one places, you have to take the water taxi, which is right there we can do some like controllers or like private theory. The water taxi here, they're not cheap. They're $10 a ride, well, $9.50 to be exact, one way. Most likely you're gonna use the water taxi a couple times a day. So it adds up quickly. So if you're gonna stay here for a couple days, definitely do the day trip. Day trip is actually not that expensive. So I'm staying in Venice for three days. I got my ticket, a lemon rice, water bowl for 45 euros. I think it's not a bad deal, you know, considering how many trips I'll be taking water taxi. Or you can always go for a private water taxi, but that can be extremely pricey. I asked somebody for the service. They want to charge me $70 for like a 10 minute water ride. I think that's absurd, you know, 70 bucks. Everywhere you go in Venice, you will see these narrow waterways and these buildings, like they're so close to each other. But this is so cool. This is what makes Venice unique and wonderful. Right now, I'm right under the famous Rialto Bridge. This place is a super popular tourist attraction. It's one of the oldest bridge in Venice. What's so famous about this bridge, I'm not exactly too sure, but I think it's because of the peculiar design. I personally think this is also the most beautiful bridge in Venice, and coming here is definitely one of your top priorities, for sure. When you come to Venice, you can't miss this bridge. It's like right in the center of the Venice water city. So here's the view on the Rialto Bridge. Oh, there are so many shops on the Rialto Bridge. And when you go under, there are more souvenir shops. Oh wow, I love this masquerade shop. Look at this mask. The next restaurant I'm gonna try in Venice is called La Calavera. I think I'm gonna get this one here, dark breast with honey. This one sounds good. So my dish has arrived. It's the dark breast with some honey, carrot puree, and some potatoes. I dip my dark breast inside the honey sauce, I assume. It's cooked so well, it's so tender. It's overall pretty good experience.
I love that clock there. Like each hour is represented by each different zodiacs. I am on the island of Murano in Venice. This place is a collection of seven islands connected by bridges and this place is actually pretty close to the historical center of Venice. I think it only took me about 20 minutes to get here. The first thing I noticed when I got to this island is that Murano is much quieter than historical Venice. Like, and the buildings here, they're equally as beautiful as Venice, except this place is a lot more quieter. Mulano is known for glass blowing and glass making because before Venice is a popular and a huge place for glass making. All the glass making factory, they moved over to Mulano. Until this day, they're still making some glass here. So later on, Especially when you come to Murano here, you will see a lot of shops. They do a lot of like tutorials of showing you how to do glass blowing and they're selling some very exquisite like glass here. Glass figurines of a lot of different popular uh, See, there's even glass figure in Pikachu. That's cool. These shops that sell glass of all kinds, from cups to wine glasses to figurines, like anything you could think of, anything you could mold out of glass, they sell it here. Okay, the second thing I noticed about Murano is the path here is a lot wider than historical Venice. The path it's a lot easier to walk. I think it's because it's a lot wider. And also there's way less people here. Overall, I really like Murano. It feels different than historical Venice. Over here is a lot more slower, quieter. So, it's a different vibe, you know, like here's the Venice, it's much more bustling with like shops, boutiques, you know, it's, it's just a lot more lively over there. But if you're looking for something more chill and relaxed, then come to Milano, which is a lot more quieter. I am at the entrance of St. Michael Basilica, but to my surprise, oh my goodness, the line is even longer than yesterday. Look at the line. It goes all the way, like, it's endless. The line so far away, it even goes around Dodger's Palace. I think I have to wait like two or three hours just to get in today. This is crazy. So, my plan failed again. I'm gonna come back for the third time and try to see if I can get in to the St. Mark's Basilica without waiting two hours in line. So I'm gonna try it like late afternoon and see if there is still a massive line there because yesterday there was a huge line so I decided to try this morning around 9.30 but you know what, like the morning was even longer, like much, much longer line than yesterday's afternoon. So I'm gonna come back late afternoon today and try my luck here. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that Basilica to be this popular. I mean, it is the number one attraction, but I wasn't expecting this popular, you know. There's some live music over there at that little restaurant. So let's go check it out. Okay, so here's my shrimp sandwich. It's a whole sandwich that cut into four corners. And here's my 1150 cappuccino in this one little cup. Okay, so let's try my breakfast sandwich at Bright and San Marco Square. Actually, this is pretty good. I love 
the sauce they mixed with shrimp. I don't know what kind of sauce it is. And the shrimp is fresh, really fresh. I've decided to go on the gondola. You're in Venice, might as well. Okay, I'm excited to go on this gondola ride. He's getting the gondola ready for me. Now I am about to cross the bridge. This is a cool experience. Wow, well, goodness, look how short the bridge is. The gondola belly fit through the bridge. So I'm all from Mario. The gondola goes very slow. I mean, it goes slow for a reason, so you can enjoy the scenery while going through the waterway. This is so nice. I'm 20 minutes in the gondola ride and I love every single second of it. It's extremely calming. This is extremely romantic. Like if you're coming with somebody here, this is like the perfect honeymoon. Okay, the gondola ride has to be my favorite activity in Venice so far. This is absolutely wonderful. Like I love doing this ride. I don't think you can experience this anywhere else in the world because Venice itself it's a unique place. We came back for the third time. Right now it's 5.30, so I'm heading over to St. Mark's Basilica. Well, this time, let's see how it goes because I hope it's not as crowded as yesterday or in the morning. I'm here too late. It says close at 5.15. So sorry, I couldn't go inside after trying three times. I guess it's just not meant to be. Okay, so at least the Campanile, it's open, closes at 9.15. I can do this one instead. I am on top of Capenine Tower and this place. It's pretty cool. Like you get to see the whole Venice from above. From this direction, you can see the top of St. Mark's Basilica. So how long do you need up on the clock tower? I would say 10 minutes. I mean, obviously, I don't think there's a time limit for how long you can stay up here. But I think for me, 10 minutes is enough. You can stay here for hours, maybe to watch the sunset. So tonight is my final night here in Venice. And sad to say, actually, I think I'm gonna miss it. I have to say, Venice is definitely one of the most beautiful and romantic places I've ever been to. Like, there's no anywhere else in the world that's like Venice. I noticed that most restaurants, they put their dining table right next to the water. Like everywhere you go, all the restaurants put their tables right next to the water. I like that. Next time when I come back to Italy, I'm definitely gonna come back to Venice again.
If you enjoyed watching today's video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I will see you in my next video.